exactly like that. <laughs> the football's on and we're drinking water. I know. Are we? Yes, we Because we're going to be sensible this week. Sensible and we're not going to get too pissed this time. Exactly. Because we did get a wee bit tipsy towards the end. Just a tad. And we ran out of steam after two hours. Yeah. A bit long, I know, for an open podcast, but me and Mark can blether as you'll uh, come to understand in the future when we do bigger episodes. But Absolutely. welcome back to the first episode proper of the Perfect Balance podcast. One thing we didn't mention last time that we should probably explain... Why have we called this the Perfect Balance podcast? Why have we called this the Perfect Balance? Of that's why everyone's things. asking. That's, of all that, the that's things. the question. That's the question. Asking. People are talking. Now, this goes way, way back, doesn't it, Dan? It does. And obviously, you're, you're a manager of our, our, our Sunday league team, I aren't am. you? Uh, I am. Cubs, the Cubs. Which we'll mention today oh, yes. as well. Oh, yes. And our love and appreciation of the, the 4 2 3 1 formation. Oh, yeah. And that is where. The perfect balance originates from. So the four at the back, yep. you've got your two sitting, yep. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Protection. <laughs> then you've got your three, you've got your wingers, you've got the person in the hole, and then up, and then you've got your one striker, that's all you it's need. It's interchangeable. And that's it. It, it can be anything you want it to be. Anything you want, anything you can imagine, it is the what perfect that, balance. Exactly. exactly. The perfect balance. So this is going to be more of a main sort of format of a show, isn't it, Mark? We want to get... Yeah people on talk about their experiences of football Scottish or otherwise we probably will focus on yeah. as we said last time Scottish football but we know people who are maybe from down south or from other countries who support different teams so exactly. we're not going to drag them on and ask them to talk All about right. stuff they don't know about right. well, that's it. so we thought today we'll kick off with introducing ourselves a bit more maybe yes talk about uh, each other's teams exactly yeah so today first episode you have the honour of talking about your beloved thank you Dundee Football Club Dundee FC with that glorious Fred Perry-esque shot on. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, that's yeah. the proper badge. That is the proper Dundee badge. None of your crap today, you know? Yeah. That, that cartoony style, like made-up no. Dundee badge. This is the badge. That's that's your bread and butter, the badge <laughs> there, isn't it? <laughs> creme de la creme of badges. Creme de la creme. That's beautiful. What happened that season again? Absolutely nothing. Just uh, another standard season, was it? wasn't okay. it? Yeah, we'll move on. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> Right. For those of you okay. who don't know, they, they, they got relegated. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get that one. I did, yeah. That's this one. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about your love of Dundee. Yes. How, how did you first start supporting Dundee? This is quite a controversial one, to be honest with you. I know, grow- I know, but well, they don't. <laughs> well, they don't, yeah. Well, growing up, to be honest, I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't actually like a Dundee supporting family really because I know that your, your old boy's not the biggest Dundee fan he's not, either he's just he's more he, really, likes, he likes the football and that's the way I was he's kind like of Scott, brought he's, he's like he's one of maybe the few people who is like country before a club exactly he's, yeah, like, he's yeah, a Scotland so, fan and he just likes watching football exactly that exactly that mate so my, my dad is a Scotland fan he doesn't really have an association with a specific club mm. but a lot well my uncle he's actually like a massive Rangers fan I mean, he used to go through a lot of the games mm-hmm. and as a result, obviously, with that being my dad's brother, mm-hmm. he liked Rangers as well growing up. So when I was actually kind of younger, mm-hmm. I did I did like Rangers. Easily led. Yeah, I did yeah. like led Rangers astray. when I was when I was younger. But then something funny happened. Oh. And it, 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 I was still young at the time. I was maybe only like six, about six. And I remember, like, in my family, my, my uncle on the other side of the family, mm. he was a massive Dundee fan. And we also had my, my cousin's partner. She was a United fan. Mm. Oh, and I was kind of told, like, okay, now, you, you, uh, right. You're what across- we should do is support your hometown team. You're at crossroads, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, right, okay. Uh, and had you, one had, of you the biggest- ever, had you ever been to, like, Ibrox or, like, a Rangers game at uh, Benz or Tannis at that point? No, no, no. I just, I, like, I never, just kind of followed them. I, with it was just uncle. almost, yeah. It was like a watch, watch on it TV on or that Scott Sport. Yeah, Jim Delaher yeah. <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> but I mean, that that was the big one for me, and then I I, I just thought, no, I'm going to support Dundee. I'm supporting. So them. why uh, Simon's now raging because he's thinking, why did he pick Dundee over United? No. It's the colour, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> the colour was the biggest one for me. It was the dark blue. It's just, look at it, it's beautiful. Did you not fancy what? the United, it's my home team. Absolutely the black not. and tangerine. Absolutely <laughs> not. No. 
Is, I mean, it's got yeah. to be. Has it not got to be? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and that from there, basically, I was like, no, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. That's my team. It's Dundee. So it was still obviously that early age, but then that's when I dedicated time to actually want to go to games. Mm. Maybe at that age, and I was starting to obviously grow up. And from there, I just kicked on with Dundee. It was Dundee Daft. Dundee Daft. Dundee Daft. And uh, what was funny was that I lived in a flat when I was younger, obviously, and acro- just across uh, my neighbour, he was maybe a couple of years older than me. Um, he he was a massive Dundee fan, like him and his dad. And uh, this is actually what brings me... Uh, what I can remember as being like my first Dundee game. Mm. But I'm sure I've been at a game before, but I can't really remember off the top of my head when I went. But for me, <coughs> was the the uh, Perugia game. Oh, the UEFA Cup game. The UEFA Cup game. That was the first one that really, like, I can remember being there. Ah, so you'd been to games before then? Yeah, definitely. That, definitely that would have been one. Well, that's 2003. Aye. That was 2003, but I've definitely been at a game before then, but I just generally can't remember. So before we go on to your game, we'll talk about games Yeah. Later. So... You said you grew up a, a, a initially as a Rangers fan for your uncle. Do you remember, like, do you, what's like, so what's like the first game you can remember, like, watching on the telly, if not before? Like, I, I generally, like, honestly, just, I, don't, I, I don't know, yeah. Do I, don't remember, I like, can't remember. Was there any, like, your first favourite player or that that you had, like, when you were Rangers or when you first started supporting Dundee before you went to a game? Is there anyone that sticks Th- That's out? the thing, mate. Like, I, I was more like, um, the, the football side of things was mostly just a sociable kind of thing uh-huh. for me, like, like where I lived, there was quite like a there was a lot of like people my age around about that area, and we just go out and play football every night. Mm-hmm. And I I loved having loads of different football tops. Yeah. Anyway, as you as you know yourself, I've got vast majority of different football strips there. And that could be a, like a video one day. Yeah, I've literally just like because you know me, I'm the same. Like yeah. I could just like probably cover the whole floor of the pub. And yeah, super. So it wasn't like. like in particular, if there was a sound game on, I would watch it. Yeah. I would just be like, if there was any type of football on, I'd watch it. Uh, so that's how there probably wasn't a, a certain game that mm. sticks out in my mind where I was like, oh, I support them. But I remember actually going to the game and I was just totally amazed by it, you know? Mm. So, so that, 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 Perugia is the first game the, you Perugia remember. is the first game that I could like clearly remember being No there. wonder, because that's like, obviously, that's the last time Dundee were in Europe, wasn't it? Yeah. And that, that, would been, that, that would have been the first time in how long Dundee were in Europe. Probably since... Generally couldn't tell you. Pro- Generally couldn't. I mean, I mean, I don't know. When, when, I mean, when was the last time Dundee won the, like, the League Cup? That was what, 70s maybe? I don't well, you know better than me. Well, it was the, the 60s was the glory 60s. years for us, yeah. So you maybe would have got into the cup winners in fact no you wouldn't have because it was the league cup and stuff. Yeah. Was that, was that, was that the only time the that maybe you The 60s was the yeah. When you won the league you know you ended up playing like AC Milan and stuff. Yeah. You don't get to the that, that, was, so that was probably the first time in like over 50 years I Dundee were in Europe. It was mental. So, so no wonder you, you, you remember. But that's the one I remember and it was quite a funny way how it you know how it happened but we'll obviously get on to that. Yeah. Well, but really like I say growing up there wasn't like a particular game that I could remember where I was like oh you know, he's my hero kind of thing or whatever. It was just mostly my kind of love of the game in general, yeah. you know. But I did, like I say, obviously, I kind of did like Rangers growing up, but then I was more just because of my, my family. Yeah. And then, So it's like, well, you love football first and then you found your team. Almost. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's a different kind That's of everyone's way, got the different but everyone's genre. got that. I mean, let's face it, most of us obviously support who... Our dad supports, or our mum supports, you know what I mean? Your actual family, that's how you kind of have that affiliation with a team. So yeah. that's how I've, I've, I've obviously got that soft spot for Rangers, but for for me, I'm a, I'm a Dundee fan. Mm-hmm. I'm a Dundee fan, and that's it, you know? Everyone's got so, their own journey to their team, is not it? Exactly, mate. And that was my journey, yeah. so... So that Perugia game, yeah. can you remember who was in the, the, in and around the team at that point? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that team... The so biggest was, from, from that point, my star was was Novo. Novo, I cut some player. Novo, unbelievable, so good, just fast, rapid, and he was just always direct and positive. That's what I just loved about him. You know, that's really what like I just appreciated at the time. I just remember just being amazed by 
because it was under the lights as well. It was that late kickoff, you know, quarter uh, eight game. Had he just and signed was, at that point, or was he in the cup final team the year before? I actually can't remember myself. No, he'd, he'd signed before that. Yeah, so he was. Yeah, he, yeah. he was already there for yeah. a wee bit. He was, of in, time. he was playing for Dundee in that final. Team. Yeah, he would have been. Aye. Yeah. No, he was. He was playing at that time, mate. But that that was just that game, that moment really realization, really, you know, under the lights. Yeah, and course. it was oh, mate, it was it was absolute scenes, and it, it was a noise oh. as well. It's just electric, you know. You don't really get that, you know, a game is oh. a lot now. And I was actually sitting in the main stand. I remember it clear as day. I was even sitting in the dairy. I'm surprised you could see anything. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's only seven anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was the noise, really. <laughs> but I remember that that was the game where I was like, "Oh, this is just amazing!" Yeah. And it really, I really fell in love with the game. Really, from that point, that was. I mean, I look back on that. That that was around about like September. Yeah, September at the time. It would have been early season. Yeah, two thousand three. So I was actually only like six or seven about that time. Seven. I'm you, Bob. You're only, you're only a year younger than me. Uh, yeah. No, two years. Oh, two years younger than you. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're yeah. at the end. I'm at the end of 93, right? Aye, I'm near the end of oh. 95. So you that was what? October, you see. Aye. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was the game for me. It stood out. It was just like, wow. I just, I was kind of hooked by it and I remember it quite clearly. And obviously from there, I mean... There was other players as well, obviously, like Canigia. Well, but, but I mean, that was obviously just before that time for me as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was to really appreciate it. But I mean, a guy with that name, stature, what he's done in football, that was it's amazing to think that yeah. he played for Maradona's best for mate. Exactly, mate. <laughs> imagine, just imagine that. You know, like what's the chance of that happening nowadays? You know, crazy. But I mean, you obviously have great players there, like Nimzadze, Zara. You know, that, the list really goes on, mate. I've got them all there. We'll Love get to all this, won't we? You know what I mean? For your uh, ultimate Dundee 11 that we're going to do later Absolutely, on. mate. But that was the one where I was like, well, yeah, this is the this is the team for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a mental time for you as, as Dundee as a club growing up, wasn't it? Because that was like, not the glory years, if you like, but it yeah. was when all like, these amazing well, players were coming around. Exactly. And it was just... There was just a buzz about the place, man, right. you know? And that's obviously why I was probably attracted to Dundee at the time as well, you know? Yeah. That, that Just those big-name players coming in, you know, how, like, obviously we're, we're doing well in the league and stuff at the time So you well, tell so. me that, like, the thought of going to see, like, players called Cavalero and Sara and Sancho was more appealing than, like, McCracken, Easton, <laughs> Miller. It's a no-brainer, was it, really? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see that crap? Uh, you know, <laughs> so no, by the, the form talent. Exactly, and I, I, I just yeah, from that moment, Dan, that was the one. That was uh, the one for me. Fair enough, mate. So, you said that's like your first memory of going to see Dundee, Perugia, UEFA Cup under the lights. Mm -hmm. Probably your first game, and probably the biggest Dundee game you've ever been to. Yeah. Um, was it your favourite match day experience, or have you been to something since that's topped that? With Dundee. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. There's been... Now, I know that I've said that being my first game, right? That you can remember. But yeah. I, can, I can... Yeah, that I can clearly remember. But obviously, before that was, like, in May. So, like I was saying, that Perugia game was September 2003. Because, of course, you got the cup final but before I'm, that. Exactly. May 2003, that was the cup final against Rangers. Yeah. And I was there. I was there with my two cousins at the game. But I can't really remember mm -hmm. watching the game I remember I just remember the fans there though like I was just honestly open my eyes like massively the amount of Dundee fans through there obviously all the Rangers fans there as well it's just really like being that young going mm -hmm. to a game like that you're just like wow you know going to the National Stadium for the first time mm -hmm. at Hamden it was just amazing you know and obviously the game itself looking back at it now you know after years you know, Ollie Smith hitting the ball. Yeah, like it was a game where Dundee really should have won it. We really should have won it, but obviously that. Mm, I'm that so. <laughs> With a header, yeah, say no more. It was just one of those days, you know. It really was there for the taking, but couldn't get it, you know. But what that that atmosphere for me was tremendous, you know. That was one where I remember it just being like my cousins being buzzing. They're obviously quite 
old, a lot older than me as well. They're maybe like about 15, 20 years older than me. Right. So I remember them being so excited about going at the game. Oh, no. How much it meant to them because they were Dundee fans. And as they would well. have um, maybe realised how, how mental well, it was. Know? How special, it was. how special that was more than yeah. you did. And I could just remember how, how buzzing they were and I was like just so excited to go through, you know. You're probably thinking like in the back of your head, oh this is great, this is what we do. Yeah, this is, this, this is, is, this the is standard, the almost normal. like normal. Yeah. And how wrong I was. You've not been you know? back since. I know mate, I know. Well we've had glimpses but not not another final. You had that we've semi. the semi-final. The great great now. But we'll get on to that as well later mate, but. Yeah, I mean, that was the one, really. That was the big, big one, you know, for us to win. But I, I wish I was a wee bit older to really appreciate it appreciate more. more, you know. But obviously, being at that age, still getting to be there, mm-hmm. see it. Well, incredible. this is that. I mean, obviously, I'll talk about it when we do my episode later, but I'm obviously very lucky that I've I, I've been getting this yeah. near enough every year. I know, mate. Um, that's, one thing I, that's one thing I always try and make sure that I, I don't forget. You it's go. like... Yeah. You, it's, in, like really. take it in like yeah, enjoy yeah. it while it's there because you, you don't know you, you, even at a club like Celtic you don't know you could go through a, like a, the lean spell the Rangers spell, have done for spell, the last yeah. 10 years with winning anything so you have to take it in when you enjoy it so especially for like, if you're a fan of a club like Dundee or United in Simon's case yeah. and it's, um, you have it's to it's a big deal mate it's a, big, you it's a massive it. deal you should treat it for the occasion that it is I mean like you were saying about UEFA Cup match as well as Perugia one thing I hate is when people like they crap all over the well, what is now the Europa League. So oh, it's the the, the Diddy competition or whatever. It's, it's a European thing. Enjoy it. Exactly. Take it in, like because who knows? You, oh, you might say you might take it for granted. Oh, it doesn't mean as much now. But how, how do you know when you're going to be back to that stage? Never mind the stage beyond that. Exactly. Mate. Like, exactly. You've got you've got to take it in. You know you've got to appreciate it at the time. But I mean, as you were saying, it's obviously down to match the experiences that you mm. want to find out about me. I mean, the next one's really a no-brainer. I can remember it like yesterday. It was a dude and Derby, wasn't it? <laughs> what a day that was, by the way. It wasn't even just the game itself. Well, it was the game, yeah. but I mean, the build-up for the game was so amazing. So let's set the scene. You set the scene in this game. So set the scene. So what had happened was, right? Huh? This was around, This was when the 2nd of May. 2nd of Do May, you remember the date? 2nd of May, yeah. 2016, wasn't it? What was the weather like that? <laughs> It's oh, amazing that the only thing that Dundee fans got to celebrate is... You know what? It was, it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful Monday. We haven't even got to the Challenge Cup yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> it was a beautiful Monday. <laughs> oh, it was, it was the <laughs> Monday morning. <laughs> I can remember who I was, but anyway, we'll get on yeah. to that. But no, you know what was funny? Because I had an exam the next day because I was at university at a the time. Did, yeah. And it was just around that exam mm-hmm. period for us and I wasn't going to go at the game. I wasn't going to go. And I, I was, at, I was wow. actually on my way to work and I was thinking more to myself, like that that was the day of the game and I was on my way to work and I was thinking, oh, should I go to this game? Should, as I, you not? Were, should, uh, I, should I not? As you were walking down the overgate. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that <irony. laughs> yeah. You used to walk in the overgate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just thought, you know what? Fuck it, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to the game, I'm doing this, right? So what I done was, well, whilst I was on route to work, I phoned the club shop, I was like, look, is there any tickets going for the game tonight? Shocking that you want a season, season ticket holder, by the way. Anyway, Andrew, you worked every weekend. Aye, exactly, well, <laughs> know, exactly, mate. Saturday is Sunday, you're in. But anyway, anyway yeah. phoned them, and they were like, yeah, we've got tickets left, but they're only for the main stand. But I was you're like, in that main stand, I right? know, mate. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take them. So I got a ticket for me, and actually, I got a ticket for a guy I used to work with at O2 as well. He's a massive Dundee fan. Got him a ticket and I got uh, my good friend Robbie a ticket as well. Looking forward to getting you on, Robbie. You'll be a good podcast. I'll be, that'll be a Hearts podcast yeah, in the future. Definitely. Like that'll Robbie. be a good podcast. He's a good man. <laughs> he is. And uh, yeah, so I got a ticket for all of us, but I didn't actually tell my mate at O2. Oh, you surprised us. Yeah, so... Nice. When I got into work, I you said, I said, like, what are you doing? I said, I'll probably just watch a game on TV or something. I said, no, nah, you went you're going to the game. He was like, nah, nah, you're true, you're true. I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to take it. He was like, okay, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that, that was the build up before yeah. the day. So we had our day of work and then awesome. here we are, like, right back up the road, get changed, get the top on the scarf, you yeah. know, here we go. So not only is this a derby at the end of the season, was it the last day of the season? 
or was it? Um, it was post split, wasn't it? Post split. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Not quite last day. No. But why was it the last day for one of the teams? <sighs> well, it was a shocker of a season for them, wasn't yeah. it? For United, uh, one that cost them big time, wasn't it? Especially with the the players that they were bringing in at that time yeah. as well. They were. They were really spending a lot of money, weren't they, to, to keep in there that Demel as well, wasn't it? Guy Demel. Well Simon will know better than us, but it was like it was like you pressed the panic button almost. Yeah. And then was you, it kind of catchable in that as well? You, you, they brought in guys <laughs> like uh, like Demel and Cinema Pong Goal and like these ex <laughs> I, average yeah. hat, not even, I know, not that, even good ex Premier League players. That I kind of decided I was done with United and Stephen Thompson because I was like, nah, this is a joke. I mean it was not like you were bringing in Ex Premier League players that were good, like St. Mun bringing Jemba Jemba in, <laughs> like, t- <laughs> like title winners, you know, like Guy Demel, like a really <laughs> meh right back for West Ham. And then, like, although yeah. the Cinema Pong goal, was he not in the Champions League? Actually, was he not in the Champions yeah, he, League? But he was out. I'll take it, I'll take it back. Yeah, yeah. European Cup winner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Florent Cinema Pong goal, played for Dundee. Great right? signing. Great yeah, there was loads of weird signings yeah. that year from United. And it just. It, was kind of did going he not get like injured really badly as well? Pongley I or think whatever. He did, yeah. I think he only played like one game and there was. Was a that the same height. season that like we- uh, Wesley Schneider's brother was in as well? Rodney. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I can't remember if that was the same season or not. But it was a weird time because yeah, it was that same. Like, so I imagine them as like periods of times was like for three years United you know, were like on the brink of collapse and it was like why this team looks good like on paper you look at the yeah. names. I mean, we talked like, about like the 2014 team last week. It was yeah. like it was all based on clever signings plus bringing good young players through. It was like United had just totally gone against that yeah. and everything started to fall apart. Yeah. But, um, but so that was that the state was, they were in. Yeah. And it was and so that's, bad. That's why, you know, you, you could just felt that, because you could kind of feel that this was going to be the match where... And so United had to win to stay up. They had to, they had to. A draw win. was no good. They had to win. A draw was no good, Dan, yeah. And they had to win. It was a must-win game. And... Uh, so talk us through the match. So, yeah, so... As we do, we're rushed obviously back home after work, got the old clobber on, met up, went for a couple of pints as well, uh, went to the game, the main stand, we're buzzing. Can't what are you in. thinking? Are you thinking there's no way we're not getting that? Oh yeah, yeah, I was pretty like, confident because that was a strong Dundee team we had as well there, um, you know, Greg Stewart, Hemmings, you know, that was obviously that prolific kind of mm-hmm. season for them to... And you just felt like we've got too much in the locker to to lose really. To, to United lose were game. United were really struggling, weren't they? Like really struggling. Yeah. Like bomb of the barrel. So uh <laughs> yeah, that and then obviously going to the game and then that oh man, it was just it was just absolutely bouncing. It was like a it's like the, the you know carnival was in town or something, you know. What I mean? <laughs> because there was obviously the the city itself, then that's I think most people would agree that, you know, if you support Dundee or United, the derbies are... It's just a great atmosphere. It's a brilliant atmosphere. And I think if you took that away, you know... I'd be like, to... But it's like when you say, like, this nonsense about Dundee and St. Johnston being a derby or United yeah, St. Johnston. Right. And Charlie Adams said it the other day. He says, like, that's a lot of nonsense. Yeah. That's not a derby. Couldn't kill he says, we've only got one derby, and that's Dundee and United. Yeah. And he's bang on. Sunday Derby's brilliant. Like, yeah, I, I'd, like obviously, I've been to loads. I've mm. been, I've been in both grounds on I think either side. I've been plenty in United and plenty in Dundee. Yeah, it's always great. Oh, it's it's, br- it's really a, really a bad game as well, actually. Um, yeah, some 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 games could be forgettable, yeah. but like more often than not, more you get often good games. than not, it's good and, and it's brilliant. Just the atmosphere in there. It's not even, you know, we say it's a hatred, but it isn't really. Eh? It's quite. Uh, Dundee United is one of those games where. You literally do hate them for ninety minutes, yeah. but then you all go back and to the same pub after. Because at the end of the day, that's the way the city is. Really, it's kind of splintered of the two, isn't it? And everyone and got, gets and on. You, it's not like you've got oh, you support. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 you're all lucky, and that's where all oh, you live, don't you? Yeah. Well, that's where I grew up. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, that that game itself was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Like you said, you were bouncing. You had no doubts that you were going to win that game. Not only get the draw, but didn't they start that well? I didn't. They, you know, they well, got the first goal. They got the first goal. Well, what was you it King Millie, was it? No, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was what, what's his name? The big lad up front. I can't remember his name. They brought him in. Aye. I think it was only O'Fair there about one season. Was O'Fair. it? O'Fair. 
Was that his name, Simon? Ah, yeah, it is. Can't I think remember. it was that or fair. That's, race, how, me- that's, that's how memorable he was. Yeah, blacked out. That was fair <laughs> score. He's blacked out from his memory. It was just a tapping. Yeah. And uh, we were like, oh, you're joking. No me, way. Man. You're going to done yeah. it. And done you're going gonna to hips it. <laughs> but no, thankfully, we didn't. We had that big mountain of a man, Gadzalov, oh, there. Oh, Gadzalov. King Gadzalov. Big Bulgarian. Yeah. Goes out, I'm sure he goes out with Miss Bulgaria. Or a former Miss Bulgaria. No wonder after there that goal, eh? Exactly. You know what I mean? Threw so really herself at him. That's all he needed. You put your head down. Aye, aye. Come here, aye, come here. And, uh, oh, that, from there, that's when you know. You that's can when see the party starts. Aye, and we, we just erupted. We erupted. We were up on the seats uh, in the main stand and everything. About two, took a, a, one of the benches out. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that was... That was just electric, and you could see the United fans from that moment just deflated. Yeah, that they, they, they knew it, like, you know, crying. And, you know, it's all your fault, Tom said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, that was, that was and, that, and that was before the boy that you played up front with for the oh, race. <laughs> I don't you worry, that's my favourite part. And, uh, yeah, and we all know what happened after that. A little well, free kick. People might not know. little free kick, edge of the box there. Who takes a Greg Stewart? He just he spots Craig Whiten pulling away. <laughs> just gives him a little tap there. And on you go, son. Right away goes Craig. Strikes through it. Not the greatest of strikes, <laughs> like, but admittedly. But he's he's hit it towards goal, and that's all you need to do with that kind of catch a ball is in the goal, you know. And uh, right that Japanese international goalkeeper. Japanese yeah. in the World Cup. I know, mate. <laughs> It's mental, eh? Madness. <laughs> and what? Oh, that was it, you know, the scenes. And it was the run yeah. with Craig as well, you know. You just didn't know where to go. You taught me to finish like that, didn't you? Exactly, yeah. So for you that don't know, I actually, uh, we went to the same high school um, with Craig Whiten. And uh, we played in the, the same football team, obviously, together for the school. And we, I was up front. And I, I, so was, I was too old and obviously wouldn't have been good enough <laughs> either. <laughs> and he was up front with me, so obviously taught him all he knows, you know. And that was it. The passion was there. And he's a massive Dundee fan. Uh, and I was just honestly delighted for him. Absolutely delighted for him. And yeah. I, I, I just can picture. It was the nail in the like, coffin, wasn't yeah, it? Oh, like they were down already. Yeah. But not only that, to win the game and in front of them oh, in the Derry. The, 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 there was. They were all literally on their knees, the fans. Eh? It was, uh, it was to be what, a, what a day. What a day it was. And, you know, for that moment, you were just like on top of the world, yeah. you know? Excellent. Absolutely. How did the exam go next, eh? Oh, terribly. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. It was worth it, though. Aye, it was worth it at the time, mate. Definitely. So, but that, that there, yeah. If that's a peak, yeah. and I think you're right, we could talk about, like, Beating Inverness to win like the Challenge Cup and that, but I don't think it gets better than. I mean, we that. struggled that game as yeah. well. I remember that. When your uh, Ballon d'Or nomination, Lee Griffiths scored oh, that day. <laughs> what a player, man! What a man! What a man! Beautiful man. <laughs> so if that's if the Dune Derby is the peak in terms of match day's experiences, the one that's maybe clearest in your mind, as opposed to Perugia, fair enough, you can remember it. But mm-hmm. this is more recent. You you know exactly what yeah. you can tell me what you were doing and what that day. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, if that's the peak, what's the trough? What is like the worst, say, away day experience you've had or match day experience that you've had? It doesn't have to be in terms of like a score or like... Just the actual day just itself. Just day, what if you remember? Worst away day, mate. Because as we know, football, football isn't all highs, there's lows as well. Exactly. I mean, it's going to surprise you, but I've not really been to many away days as such. Um... Because as you know, I played football quite a lot when I was when I was younger, so I didn't really get to many away games anyway, and I'd be working weekends and things. But one of the biggest ones that I, I really didn't like was St Johnston away. Yeah, I really didn't like it there. I just something about it. I just didn't didn't really like the ground. But the biggest one for me wasn't so much the game itself, but it was the way I was treated at the game. Oh really? Yeah. I always found St John's to be a really bad away day as well. Like you just don't like felt, it. You never felt like you were going to enjoy yourself. No. You never thought you were going to win. No, no matter how bad they were, you just thought we're not going to win here because yeah, see, you know the type of game it's going to be. 
and the yeah. yeah, and but not even that. It was just the, the way you were treated as well. Because remember, you get a good pie at half time. Oh, great pie! <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't fault them on the pies. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, the actual away day itself it was ex- the experience. It was only a young lad anyway. He went through with my dad, and we we were going to go in the stand at, at the side. I, I don't obviously know the names of the stand for St Johnston. Uh, but we went to go into the side, the side stand, mm. the side behind of the, the pitch. Go. No, oh, no, the side of the pitch. Oh, yeah. And the the steward there said, "No, no, you can't go in there. It's full." And we were like, "Right, okay." But like you were seeing people still going in. Okay. And he was like, "No, you need to go in like behind the goal." Mm. So we were like, "Right, okay." And uh, we looked at the pricing, and it was more expensive behind the goal behind the goal than it was at the side of the stand. Probably because that was, I know in that in St Johnson that main stand they'll sometimes let away fans in there if behind the goal is full, which is the weird thing. I would, it's weird that they would say that that's full before well, behind the goal is, because it'll be cheaper because it's the home end. Yeah. But we know with McDermott Park they, they can't even get a half full no, in the home end. No. Mind full. So that was the thing. They obviously knew a big crowd would come through for Dundee and mm. they wanted to make as big much rival, money. Big rivalry after all. Ah, it's the derby, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> two side derby. The big one. <laughs> Um, and Dundee obviously took a lot, lot of fans through as they, as they normally do and uh, yeah so we, we get in there get in at the, the stand behind the goal and there's still loads of seats available like where they said that you couldn't get in mm-hmm. and I, I, I was just quite and yeah it makes no sense because they wouldn't open up that in the main stand no. unless behind the goal was filled. yeah exactly I was just like what, what are you doing and it obviously takes away more from that atmosphere yeah. so they've, they've you know took away the atmosphere in order to line their pockets mm-hmm. basically you know what I mean and it was which I understand because obviously they won't get a lot of like big away supports you mm-hmm. know from the SPL and Dundee's one of their biggest yeah. days for income but I just thought it was really poor to treat fans that way mm-hmm. And for that reason alone, that's probably why I would say that's my worst experience yeah. at away day. You know, it's just taking money off of us Fair enough. needlessly. So it's not even. <laughs> so it's not even. It's not even the game. Not even to do with like getting punted in like that. Not even You're the game. Just, no, it was just, 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 just that actual. Just to take us. That was the that was the worst away day experience for me. <laughs> Being a Dundee fan, it's always good times, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> day, oh, that says the, the footballs day, are relevant. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, on some good days, but no, no, that's the biggest one for for me. Bad worst experience of a way day. <laughs> I know some of you might laugh at home, but that's that's the reason why. Fair enough. You know, that's East the, the reason why. East to the run. Aye. We're back in the room. We're back in the room. <laughs> Three, two, one. Like <laughs> back in the room. Remember little Britain. You couldn't do oh, that now, could you? No, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done your worst away day. Yeah. We've done your peak of the Dune Derby. We've done your trough. Let's bring it back up again a wee bit. Yes. What was your best away day? Oh, oh, the best away day. <laughs> uh, you know what? One of the best away days I've ever been on is Rafe. Rafe Rollers? Rafe Rollers. What an away day that is. Unbelievable. Now, I'm curious because yeah. I might have also been at this game if it's the one I'm oh, thinking of. Which one? I went, well, you go ahead. And uh, if not, well, there's two times I've been to uh, Starts Park. Uh, and that was... Uh, lovely ground. Uh, Trains going by. I remember <laughs> I, went, I went there with like mates from school at the time. And uh, we got the train through. Had the, you know, mm. we were drinking that on mm. the train. And uh, my good mate, you know, Brad. Oh, yeah. 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 Brad had dressed up as like uh, a monkey for the game. Like, is he, he, is he like still the monkey? Was he still the mascot? Ah, he was a mascot yeah, at the end yeah, of that, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he went through the monkey suit and everything <laughs> from the game. And uh, oh, it, was just, it was just some carry on, eh? I mean, the, the football wasn't the best, but I mean, what do we expect? Yeah. But, I mean, was it, was just the, it was just the banter we had in that, eh? It was a great laugh. I was thinking laugh. about uh, UEFA Cup. Remember that time Riffle was beat by a Munich? Eh? You were, do you remember? No, that? I don't yeah, know that. I played uh, beat by a Munich in UEFA Cup. And, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm sure it was the beat Celtic in the League Cup final 
at uh, Ibrox. Uh, and I think it was the next year that they wow. played Bayern and he was cutting the beat them. Some team, he's going to beat Perugia. No. Ref Rose. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting us to shame, eh? <laughs> you know what I mean? Not the ref. You and Benny, <laughs> come on. <laughs> anyway, uh, ref Rose. But yeah, I mean, but the one that stands out for me, the, the best of them all, the creme de la creme, was... The creme de la uh, cacodi. The, the, the famous, the notorious Musa. His oh. debut. Oh. His debut. The most anticipated game <laughs> in Dundee's history. Yeah. The, the, Neil McCann Mo- the, the, stated the best, he was the best striker, be, the best striker in Scotland called Musa at that point. Exactly. We were thinking, street side wow. of Dumbelli. Like, yeah, <laughs> Neil McCann bigged this guy up to the hills, right? He, he said he is going to be a star. He will be a fan's favourite. And I tell you something, Neil, you will not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what a player! <laughs> and, yeah, honestly, it was, uh, that was, I went through with Robbie, and uh, was this a League Cup game then? Like, it was the season, yeah. It's not the same thing I'm thinking of. Um, so it was like pre-season, and then okay. so they were, yeah. you know what I mean? That time yeah. for the bet, Fred. It's yeah. kind of they're, they're just warming up for games. Other bookies are available. Aye, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not sponsoring these yet, right? <laughs> Ring my bell, bell, my bell, bell. ring a ling. Right, anyway, so I we went there and uh, wow, what what a game, mate! It's me and Robbie on the train again, had a few beers, you know, smashing monkey suits. No monkey suits this time, unfortunately. Musa, (laughs) Musa, but um. Oh, miss a mask. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but no, we've obviously never seen this guy before, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he start, he, he's on the bench. Yeah. Right? He wasn't starting. Oh, teasing you. Yeah, so oh. like, he, so that's the thing. Hey, oh. He's warming up on the side. And he's coming along. <laughs> and, he's like, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, what? who is this guy? He's a legend. Right? <laughs> he's a legend already. He's, he's like, the ball. Yeah, exactly. We're like, what guy? <laughs> And uh, so we're going to beat 1 0. Uh, and uh, who else do we turn to? Oh. And uh, you see the old. Make, make the call. Oh, of course, right? And there's Booster coming on, and we're all giving up. We'll see what this guy's like, right? Anyway, first couple of balls up, Tommy. He's like, kind of get in, kind of bring it under control. He's like, doing a little. He's, he's like, trying so hard, like, he's trying to heel flex in that. We're all kind of like oh. laughing in the crowd, right? Yeah. But we're like, you keep the piss of it, you know? Come on, come on. I mean, like, he's, he's decent, though, look, he's trying, right? And he's, he's trying, like, fuck that, right? He's pressing and, you know, he's getting the fans going, right? And anyway, what happens? He scores. <laughs> he jumps up. He jumps up on the little bit, you know, separating the stand. And he about slapped and broke his fucking neck. Honestly, honestly, if you haven't seen it, Google this, right? Oh. Uh, mental, right? Absolute <laughs> scenes, and everyone's like, Musa, 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 Musa. <laughs> and that was it. He was just an icon from then, that day fourth. <laughs> King Musa. King Musa. And, uh, What's he doing now? And you know who scored the winner that day, Dan? <laughs> who? Jack Henry. Oh, big Jack. Scotland International. Right, big header at the back there. Jack. Do you got that? <laughs> but that was the game where I've, I've, I kind of like first seen Jack Henry because remember, like I say, that was kind of pre season. Yeah. And. You like. From then, I was like, he's a good player. Good play. He's a good player. Like, he, he liked to get it down, yeah. spread it out. I was like, aye, he's got something. And of course, you knew him. about him with Wigan being your uh, English team. That's it, mate. So <laughs> I had my eye on him. I was like, aye, <laughs> he'll do for us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was my best away day by far. What a day that was. You know, first introduction of Musa. What else can you oh, ask for? Yeah. Is there a better away day? The, 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 probably the last Dundee away game I was at, I was went through with a mate Harry to. Yeah. Uh, to Kakodi and uh, it was a game your keeper got like knocked out in the second half was it Leatherin was that yeah, his name aye. and it was a really bad injury he got uh-huh. and it was like we knew how bad it was because it was literally a bit over the tannoy until he stretched it off it was like can Mr. and Mrs. Leatherin like oh, wow. please report to the hospital really? but it was a really bad injury he got <laughs> right. it was a tight game I think Dundee were like need- really needing to win yeah. I'm sure it was Whiten actually uh, of course. icon of the podcast what already Craig Whiten um, he, I think he scored like he was either one he scored and set up one and he scored two goals in like the last minute to like win the game yeah. it was brilliant like, nice. again like just scenes something about uh, 
there's something about, about there's yeah, something about there, there yeah. I, I love their ground as well I think it's very really tidy isn't it there. and it's like obviously right next to the, the, the trail tracks as well, as well. Hey, it's like, so unique, like it's a weird ground but I like yeah. it I like how weird and it is it's got like kind of like the, the glass windows and that as well it's, that the main, stand, it's, the, it's it? like the main stand that yeah. only goes like a third of the pitch uh, it's strange it's, but it's nice though. something about it it's nice it just seems like a a down to earth kind of local club. I who like that. Who you can know? hate Rathro? Who can hate Rathro? Exactly. Who could? Especially like somebody that lives in Kirkcaldy. <laughs> John, <laughs> second mention. I know it, John. Hey, that's a weird one. Yeah. Hey, hating, hating Rath. Poor little old Rath. Don't yeah. Finland fans even hate Rath? Nah, so, not really. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> so either just their younger brother or Rathro. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love him really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to finish off your um, whistle stop tour of your Dundee fandom, yes. Let's move on to your ultimate Dundee start eleven. Where to start? What a Can club! Me? So I mean, need I say more? Another now another legend that really got me to love Dundee as well. Obviously, I mentioned Novo, mm. but. The biggest one for me, and obviously, as most of you guys will know, well, maybe not, maybe not, don't assume, is that I, I was a goalkeeper. Um, you were. And you moved all the way up. Yeah, you're, you're now I'm all the you, way up the top of the pitch. You're, well, you're moving back again. Right? I'm moving back now, the legs are going. Big <laughs> line playmaker. <laughs> a Pablo. Cubs Pablo, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I was actually a goalkeeper, so what really got me. You know, inspired to become a goalkeeper was Spiro Day. What, what an absolute hero. Like, what a keeper, by the way. What a keeper. It's, I don't think there's many better than him that's played in the, in the SPL, oh, to be honest there, yeah. with you. He's, he's incredible. I don't think everyone remembers him, but he was oh. only there for a couple of years, but he was yeah, very, very oh, good. There's a reason keeper. he went to Crystal Palace. And he was he there, there for years and over years. 10 years. And that's one of the games that I wish I went to as his testimonial, yeah. you know, the Dundee Crystal Palace game, because obviously you've told me things about... My mate uh, Rory won. Yeah, Rory and he said it was one of the... Bit, uh, I've ever, heard if, it from... I don't know if he'll ever come on, because he can be a bit shy, Rory, yeah. but he, that would be his best ever match that he experience. Aye. He said it was one of the best oh. nights of his life. Because I've heard, I've heard a lot of things as well. You know, a lot of people said to me, oh, what a day that was. Like, and I, I, I wish that I did go through, you know. And obviously, that was when Char- Charlie Adam actually played that yeah. day as well, didn't he? Yeah. And that, I think that's when he was at Liverpool and whatnot as well. It was just a, what a day, eh? Like, what a day out that would have been. And the amount of Dundee fans that were through there, you know. What Anyway, what a keeper. He, yeah. He's, he's in that. definitely. And he's, like I say, he's one of the keepers that I can remember, mm-hmm. you know, during that time. Was he was like, in the cup, a, cup final keeper as well. Yeah, he? yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, what what a keeper though! I mean, that save against Aberdeen as well. Eh? Do you remember that I one? Don't it was, know, uh, it was like a, it was it was a free kick, I think, that they had, and it was it was looking like it was going to go in all mm. the way, and it like swerved in every change direction. He's just managed to like just stick out the arm no, and I just save the oh, arm. Just I was like, what? It was just a total eye opener. He was a god at Dundee. Yeah. He was, um, but he he was one of the biggest stars for me one of my, my stars growing up um, yeah so Spironi Spironi so what formation and, and like? actually I'll tell you a wee story oh, where oh, I oh, met oh. Spironi uh, I met him oh, yeah. uh, Spironi and Novo they were at um, <laughs> you know the Aston Curtain ah. well they were there they were doing like a meet and greets <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> Spironi and Novo, eh? they were doing meets and greets in the Aston and Aston Cup. Cup. <laughs> Imagine that, eh? like two massive stars <laughs> yeah. there, there. Um, yeah, I've got a picture in the house. Brilliant. With them. Um, yeah, show me that. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. It, but you see a young Mark in his prime there. It was just, you know, relatable. <laughs> in between the middle of me. I was about, just imagine that, eh? Oh, no. There's Spironi and Novo just. <laughs> Cup to Nasda. <laughs> but, oh, brilliant, mate. Um, so, yeah, Spironi's the goalkeeper. Right, now, I'm, for, I'm going with, formation. formation-wise, is a 4-3-3. Oh. Because that's wh- how I remember Dundee, was yeah. that attacking yeah. all out, just go for it. And that's the way I'm going to keep it, you know? You go for it, then. Uh, so, right back is going to be Dave McKay. Really? Mm. 
Not Barry Smith? No. Con- controversy straight I away. I think Mackay was a solid player. So was Barry Smith, of course. I know that was a hard one for me as yeah. well. Because I, I wrote Smith down and I took him out and put Whoa. other people in. But, I mean, Dave Mackay, I thought he was outstanding for yeah. Dundee. Just a solid, steady player. He'd done every, like everything. Like everything you could ask, you know, he, he'd done it. Like the free kick he was, as well. Ah, he, was, he was a good player, really good player. He's a coach now. He's back as a coach. He is. He? Yeah. yeah, he's there. Um, yeah. I mean, it's good to have some like the old guard back at Dundee because that's what it's all about. The way it should be at Dundee, anyway. You know, what I mean, have the icons there. Like when we obviously had Barry Smith in charge and yeah. that as well when we were in the championship. I like that. You know, I think it's good. To, it's important. Um, but yeah, right back Mackay. Now centre back, I've got Zurab. Yeah, quality player. He's wasn't he? for how little of the time he was really at Dundee. I think it was only a season or so. Yeah. Well, there's a reason that he went on to Rangers Aye. and did. And one thing for yeah, Rangers because yeah, he's a good I mean, Outstanding, eh? Really good defender, solid. Um, what more could you say? Yeah. Eh? And obviously, he went down south and done well there There's as well, Blackburn. didn't he? Blackburn, Blackburn yeah. Too, yeah. I mean, that shows how good he was yeah. to go down there and obviously to move to Rangers as well, mm-hmm. you know. It shows how good of yeah. a player he was. Uh, like I was saying to you earlier, Dan, off camera, uh, centre back next time is Gobby Lee Wilkie. Oh, United legend. Lee Wilkie. <laughs> I mean, you see, his, see his, his prime, I thought, was at Dundee, to be honest. Obviously, he had, he had his injuries and that as well, Lee, but what a, what a player he was. Like, he wasn't just like a unit, and he, like, you know, a unit and a big guy. Like, he could play as well, and he liked to drive forward with the ball. That's why I remember about him. Like, he kind of, because I remember some of the times he got played kind of in that defensive mid role. Like he sometimes, well, sometimes yeah. playing that defensive mid role because he had the legs <laughs> and he was able to kind of get forward, cover a lot of the ground and he could play. And that's why I liked, really liked about Lee Wilkie as well. He wasn't scared to kind of go on a mazy with it. And I, I love that, you know. It just kind of fitted in with that play of Dundee at the time, you know. Benetti ball. Aye, it was just, it was just beautiful, <laughs> beautiful to watch. Um, left back. Now, this is very controversial, um, but I'm going for Paul Dixon. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought like, Judas. No, I, I know, I know it was like in more recent, like more recent times. Obviously, when he was playing for Dundee, right? Like, well, I say recent, but I remember it like during, during when we were in the championship and whatnot. And I thought, what an outstanding player he is. Yeah, he's a good player, Paul I thought he was it, no, but like he obviously came through at Dundee. Mm. I was just like, he's he's a really good player. Just his delivery and everything. Defensively, he was solid. I was like, yeah, I think he makes that for me mm-hmm. in the left back spot. I mean, obviously, during that kind of time, the 2003 kind of squad, there was Hernandez, there was the left back at the time, Johnny Hernandez, but I don't think he was anything too special. No diggers. I mean? No, no diggers, right enough. Um, so I would say left back, Dixon. Well, that's a there. big call. Aye. Um, obviously, I'm playing the 4 3 3, so yeah. I'm actually having. The one sitting, but I say sitting, but we're we're not really a sitting side, right? So <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> now this is controversial, right? Because I would I'm kind of caught up between two players here, right? And how it fits into our midfield because we've got a strong, strong attack midfield attack. But I'm gonna have Gavin Ray. Yeah, I'll say Gavin Ray, brilliant player. Brilliant player. I mean, we all know he was a good player. He got his move to Rangers and that as well. He was outstanding for them. Cardiff, you know, he's he's played at a really good level. And he was just, he was full of energy, mm-hmm. Gavin Ray, wasn't he? He was that, that kind of box-to-box mm-hmm. midfielder. He was just outstanding. Really good player. Score goals as well. You know, he'll contribute for scoring goals. Yeah. But you also, like, I, I think he would be... Well, he was good at obviously defensively as well mm. when he when he came back to Dundee that, that later really on. He, yeah, he did that. Um, he obviously, the legs started to go a bit, but he was sitting, but he was that playmaker as well. He's a really good player, brilliant player. Uh, then we move on to more exciting stuff here as well, right? So then we've got Wanzara. That would be my next choice, Wanzara. Wanzara. Whatever will be, will be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Lanzara, what a player he was, by the way. What a player. I mean, like I say, he, he was one of these boys that just he just looked so comfortable with the ball at his feet. You know what I mean? Lanzara, he was just just technically gifted. Technically yeah. gifted and just made the game look easy. Uh, it was just outstanding. 
Brilliant poem. Remember my cousin Arthur really liked him. I'm sure he had like a picture of Saga on his wall yeah. and stuff. Uh, like he's a good looking guy in that oh, as well. Yeah. You know the, that slick hair and yeah. aye, it's fucking what a, what a player man, what a player. And then say no more next to him, the Mzadzi. Yeah. Baller. We could just move on. Like, <laughs> well, everyone knows he's a ball, baller, well, right? Well, fucking but, man, yeah, I mean, man, people don't remember him yeah, 20 years ago, so tell us how good him was. He, he could really do anything with the ball. He was the ultimate playmaker for Dundee. He could score goals, provides assists for fun. He was just creatively out of this world. Really out of this world. Again, another technically outstanding player that Dundee had. And like I say, at that time, it's so hard to choose for that midfield because... Well, I was going to say, no Gary Hawkins. Well, that as well, but then you've also got Kanija. Yeah. And but again, he's kind of just just before my time that that I could remember, you know, because he was there about two thousand, two thousand one. And I was obviously maybe about five, mm. four or five. So I can't, I can't say, oh, I remember him clearly playing. I can't. But obviously, looking back on all the clips, and obviously what he'd done in the game as yeah. well, it's outstanding. Like I was just like, this guy actually played for. Your team. For Dundee, my team, like you know, it's outstanding. But I mean, for me, for what I can remember, that's, uh, that's why I go for Nimzadzi, and yeah. that's a really strong, midfield, really yeah. strong midfield. Who's up front? Up front, I've got the three up front. Um, so we'll start off. With, uh, it's trying to fit these boys in, but I mean, I could see them all interchanging there. Mm. I could just picture it. I mean, as we know. It's a no-brainer. We've been speaking about him a lot, and he was one of my icons growing up. Nacho Novo. What a player! What a player! You just, whenever he got the ball, you just knew something would happen with him as well. You know, it's the way that he just drived at people, mm-hmm. and he was rapid. He was so quick. It was just, he, and he knew how to finish. He yeah. knew where the goal was. Eh? I always rated Novo. I always thought it was really weird when he went to Rangers, and uh, he was never like. The guy for them, he came I off never, the bench. I never, a lot, I never he? really he understood. It. He, he impacted the I game. Never so it, he was the one. He spoke about uh, Griffiths last week in terms of like he's the one that you always thought if he comes on, he's going to score. Mm. I always thought about Noble. Yeah. Um, yeah. He uh, he was he's a dangerous player. Oh. And then he, was, he used play, but he was playing in like a Rangers era where they had like Purso and like Darshaville and stuff. And these guys, like, Purso was maybe good for like one season, but there was a lot of like I thought. Did he's like in he front was, of him that the, the, he was clearly like the best option but and the battle was like great yeah. Novo's not playing yeah, happy exactly. days you know what I mean but the thing is like Novo was a, he was a, a legend well. at Rangers as well yeah. like well, a lot of the, the, yeah, the, the, aye, the, the fans he love him into at, it. at Rangers as well one thing that really broke my heart as a Dundee fan though was Novo when he scored, when he he scored for Rangers and he was back at Dens he's apologised for that recently I was in the I remember I was in the Derry uh, the south enclosure for all you yeah. back home um, your ticket stubs aye <laughs> and they, there he is like kissing the Rangers uh, badge in front oh, that, that broke my heart at the time you know what I mean Ray Thrower's legend as well he was he was, was mate yeah, yeah. Um, but that really did break my heart then because yeah. you, you remember him as that that's icon your guy. for Dundee you, that's your boy uh, but you know what it Football happens mate. it happens. happens it's the passion at the time and mm. you know but anyway, that really annoyed me. <laughs> um, go, next, anyway, other side. Hey, hey Caballero. Ooh, ah, ah, I want to know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Ca- play, when you Caballero. play left wing. <laughs> <laughs> but Caballero, what a player he yeah. was as well, eh? The hair. Oh, the hair, oh, man. The hair alone. And I remember a story my dad told us that uh, we actually, when I was obviously younger at the time, that we met him in uh, Matalan. <laughs> <laughs> so you got no one's money in Asda. Fabian's doing was, Matalan. My dad, my dad was saying he had a bit, like, he picked you, out, like, so many pairs of clothes and he just had it all over his arm. Who was in TK Maxx next door? And right. I, I know, but apparently, like, <laughs> I... Kits Byers in TK Maxx. apparently, <laughs> apparently, like, I clocked Caballero and I ran over him and I went, like, Dad! Dad, it's Caballero. Fabian, it's yourself. Fuck yeah. But oh, what, what a guy, eh? Just unbelievable player again. You knew, you know, he had his own song. Does that, that says it all, really, you know? Some goal scorer. And, you know, he just, he just loved scoring goals, did he? He loved scoring goals. 
obviously what happened with his leg break and that, that was awful. And Never the same player, was he? Nah. But at the time, what a player. He was a very similar kind of like to Novo in the respect that he got you excited. He got you out there. You got the your ball. Seat and something's going to happen. Yeah, you thought, oh, he's going to do something with the ball anyway. Yeah. Something's going to happen. That's why he's got to be in the squad as well. Yeah. He's one of these players, maybe, if, again, if you're not a season ticket holder, you're thinking, oh, do I go to the game? Yeah. And you're thinking, a couple of hours, but yeah, I'll go. Yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. Exactly. And you know what? The, the last pick that I've got here as well, right? Now, I knew this guy yeah, was going to be. I've the, seen who it is already. Uh, I know you love him, so you yeah, have to be a lovely level, is it? But what a player he was, eh? Stevie Lovell as well. It was outstanding, brilliant finish. My memory of him was scoring at Tannadice. Aye, and that's yeah. one I remember. Yeah, and he, what, he was a brilliant finisher as well. Like he's got, he was always one of these guys, you know, the, the usual goal scorers for Dundee, Lovell, mm. Novo. Caballero, that was it, wasn't yeah. it? That was all you seen really Dundee scoring. Or they said, ah, the, the that was the boys, wasn't yeah. it? That was the main men. And when Dundee were kind of at their at their peak, I thought that's you, you would have to be there, you know. <laughs> but another one that I remember growing up, well, not growing up, I was, I was obviously really young at the mm-hmm. time. But one of my my favourites as well, and obviously when he came back during the defiant season and that as well was Neil McCann. Mm-hmm. What a player he was, by the way, with Neil McCann. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that with the defiant season, but obviously had that massive I remember he was with reduction. Yeah. I remember. And he came back as a trialist and yeah, scored the winner on his oh, debut. Yeah, and, but mate, he didn't just, it was a world class goal. Like. It was some goal. I can remember, because um, in those situations, it's meant to be like, say, like number two, Kami Kerr, and it would be like number seven, trialist. Yeah. And that would be before yeah. the game. I remember because it was like such a massive goal in the last minute. The the I'm sure the guy on the stadium announcer was like, oh, "I'm not saying trials." So like Neil McCann scored. <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't he care? Because like again, oh, like, like he, I think did he was it Dundee then Hearts then Rangers he went to something like that. Yeah, I know he played for yeah, all three. I couldn't yeah, remember yeah, what order. Yeah, he did, mate. Yeah. But I knew he'd come back yeah, after I think he, a long I think, time. Yeah, I think he came through Dundee right enough. Um, but what a player he was as well, Neil McCann. Like I did, I remember like watching I, d- I remember like watching highlights of him that's the thing right? mm. that's why I've not got him in my start of living because I, I don't I don't really remember watching him you know live or whatever but I re- like looking at highlights it was like what a player he was are you chucking him in as manager then? that would be, uh, be lovely actually yeah I really like I thought Neil McCann was hard done by Dundee as manager yeah? I really liked the way he played he was one of these guys that actually knows football mm. and he, he was one Dundee to play and he got exactly play open it up, open it up. you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, and uh, <laughs> and I thought he got really hard done by there at Dundee, you know. But that's the way football is. Look at him just now at Inverness; he's flying, he's flying with him. Him and <laughs> fucking Billy Dodds, you know. Who, uh, which team does he support this week? Is it exactly, Dundee or yeah, United? Yeah. He's, he's, he's sports in from this. He's now, probably changed he? like three times during the aye, podcast. Like, aye. Aye. <laughs> 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 who's it all like again? Uh, but uh, no, it shows you how good of a manager he is and what he's doing with for Ness in a short period of time because they were struggling in the championship just mm-hmm. now and he's got them challenging for that kind of you know second, third, fourth spot. Mm-hmm. But anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. But that is my. That's you wrapping up your Dundee 11. That's my Dundee 11. Strong yeah. team. I think we'll get a wee, a wee graphic at the end again before we play out. Absolutely. And we'll show that off. Yep. I think it's a solid side. It's not bad, uh, is it? It's not again, bad. A couple of picks I'd be like, like mm, You think? Let us yeah. know. Like, yeah, let us know what you think. Is Mark chatting mean? absolute rubbish, not putting Barry Smith in there? <laughs> I think no Gabby Harkins as well, but you know. Hard, it's hard. Uh, it's, mate, it's, hard. It's, it's a hard one. Everyone's going to... I mean, people have their own opinions yeah. on stuff, but I mean, that team is a solid team in itself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're like... Um, I know what you mean with Barry Smith because it's one that, it's one that I've wrote down on my sheet and I was desperate to get him in you know where I was actually thinking of having him as well was that sitting row mm. can you not have got him really well but but anyway. that's what I was saying we've gone but through yeah. your team yeah. let us know what you think of Mark's let team let us know what you think guys and yeah. uh, stay tuned for more club based episodes on the perfect balance peace out guys <laughs> shut up